Nicole is a physician assistant residing in Virginia. She practiced in an urgent care and occupational medical setting until severe illness from benzodiazepine withdrawal syndrome left her unable to work. Nicole writes about benzodiazepines and their potential to cause severe and or protracted withdrawal syndromes and Valentine volunteers her time helping with ongoing benzodiazepine awareness initiatives. She serves on the Medical Advisory Board of Benzodiazepine Information Coalition, and she is a founding member of the Colorado Consortium's Benzodiazepine Action Workgroup. Nicole has also co-founded the Withdrawal Project, and she does marketing, distribution, and outreach for, medical norm for Medicating Normal, the film. She hopes to continue to use her lived experience to advocate for more education and awareness around benzodiazepine risks and harms, as well as changes in prescribing and withdrawal practices. So let's hear from Nicole. Nicole, you're on. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes, you sound clear. Okay, great. So hi, everybody. My name is Nicole Lamberson, and uh, Dee, thank you so much for the introduction. Um, so we can go to the presentation objectives slide. Um, in this presentation, I'm going to talk about my personal testimony of benzodiazepine injury um, that's often referred to as iatrogenic harm, meaning it was caused by medical treatment. I took benzodiazepines as prescribed, um, and I developed benzodiazepine-induced brain injury, which is what this um, discussion today is about. Um, I'm going to define benzodiazepine tolerance and talk about why it's important to recognize. And I'm going to discuss over rapid withdrawal and detox from benzodiazepines because I experienced that myself. And then lastly, I'm gonna talk about protracted withdrawal syndromes and why they're important to recognize. So next slide. Um, first, a little about my story. Uh, in the early 2000s, I was prescribed Xanax for work-related stress. I was started on what would be considered a low dose um, by most medical providers and probably patients too, about half a milligram or so as needed. Um, I, I say would be considered a low dose because as I've discovered over my many years um, being in the benzodiazepine withdrawal support groups and suffering from benzodiazepine injury myself, that this drug class can cause issues at seemingly small doses uh, as well as large ones and in a relatively short amount of time, uh, as short as one to two weeks for some people. Um, for others, it takes much longer to cause issues. Um, so for me, tolerance developed quickly, although I didn't know that that is what I was experiencing. And I'll define and discuss tolerance in more detail on my next slide. Um, the adverse symptoms that I developed from benzodiazepines were misdiagnosed. I was told that I was having a worsening so-called mental illness. And I subsequent, subsequently entered the psychiatric system where I would remain for almost half a decade um, before figuring out that benzodiazepines were making me ill. Um, during that five years, as a psychiatric patient, I was um, subjected to a prescribing cascade in polypharmacy, which I'll also discuss more in uh, subsequent slides. But essentially, I was put on a lot of uh, other psychiatric medications because of the harm that benzodiazepines were causing me. Um, I wound up on six drugs in total, two benzodiazepines, so the Xanax, which was the initial drug, Clonopin. I was put on a sleeping pill, Ambien, which is a Z drug, Adderall, Seroquel, and Rimeron were my six medications by the end. Um, in my five years of being drugged with benzodiazepines and seeing countless specialists, not one medical provider in that time ever mentioned that benzodiazepines could be the cause of any of the symptoms I was experiencing. I had to discover what was wrong with me um, first because a family member, my father, who was a physician, noticed changes in my health and personality. I also stumbled across a magazine article by another benzo injured patient uh, who wrote about his 
injury from benzodiazepines and put it in a magazine. And I found the magazine article. And then eventually I found more on the internet. Um, there are large and numerous underground communities online of people harmed by this drug class. And they're all supporting and helping one another to withdraw because they struggle to find validation, correct diagnosis, and support from their medical providers. Um, sadly, I didn't find the online support communities or the Ashton Manual, which is a very valuable guide by a British benzodiazepine expert psychopharmacologist. Uh, I didn't find those things soon enough. So I followed, unfortunately, more bad medical guidance to go to an inpatient detox center. There, uh, the doctors, addiction psychiatrists rapidly removed me from any drugs they deemed addictive. And this was in spite of my history of regular psychiatric care and follow-up um, and taking the medications as prescribed. So they did a standard detox protocol there, uh, which is pretty typically like a week of phenobarbital. And then um, they add in gabapentin. I was put on 900 to 1200 milligrams of gabapentin, which is actually another drug class that can cause physical dependence and withdrawal syndromes. They kept me on the Seroquel and Remeron. And then they also tried adding even more psychotropic agents there like tra Trazodone and Effexor. Um, I assume attempting to cover up the withdrawal syndrome that was emerging from the benzodiazepines, although those drugs didn't cover the withdrawal at all. Um, so that detox center may have written me down as a success story. I don't know. I was discharged home and became very ill and I never returned to the center. So perhaps they think they succeeded when in fact it caused terrible harm. I developed severe withdrawal, which I'll discuss more uh, in the presentation. So I detoxed in 2010, and although I had a short reinstatement period uh, by an outpatient psychiatrist in, attempt, in an attempt to stop the severe and intolerable withdrawal that was brought on by the detox, I uh, tapered off of that, reinstated benzodiazepines for about 18 months. So I still suffer symptoms today. I'm about nine years after my last benzodiazepine exposure and 11 years after the original detox. Um, so I was just saying, even with the privilege I possess of being a physician assistant and having a father who was a physician who accompanied me to most of my appointments, uh, I was met with disbelief and ignorance about benzodiazepines and their potential to cause harm by every clinician that I encountered for the most part. I did get lucky and find one psychiatrist who didn't know a lot about it, but she was willing to learn. Um, most treated me through an erroneous addiction lens and I was and still am disbelieved and invalidated about the severity and duration of what I experienced. Uh, next slide, please. So tolerance, um, tolerance to many of the effects of benzodiazepines develops with regular use. Um, in the introduction, Dee Foster talked about prescribed physical dependence Basically, chronic exposure to benzodiazepines causes changes in the body and brain due to the presence of the drug. And tolerance usually means that someone has developed physical or physiological dependence to benzodiazepines. So the body responds to the continued presence of the drug with a series of adjustments that tend to overcome the drug's effects. The original dose of the drug has progressively less effect and a higher dose is often required to obtain the original effect. And doctors will sometimes increase the dosage or add another benzodiazepine. Some patients end up, end up taking two at once, which was the case uh, in my story. I wound up on Xanax and Clonopin and Ambien. Um, and interdose withdrawal is also a function of tolerance where withdrawal symptoms start to develop while the patient is still on the medication and uh, often in between scheduled doses. Um, for reasons yet unknown, not everyone seems to develop tolerance and people will develop it at different rates. Some develop quickly and others can take years. Next slide. So some classic tolerance symptoms are insomnia and sleep disturbances, anxiety and panic, cognitive decline, memory loss, and agoraphobia. 
um, in Dr. Heather Ashton's benzodiazepine clinic, 10 out of 50 patients became agoraphobic for the first time while taking benzodiazepines. I became agoraphobic myself, intolerance um, while taking benzodiazepines. I never had anything like that prior in my life. I developed extreme anxiety that I had never had before. And this is why prescribing benzodiazepines regularly and long-term for the majority of patients with anxiety and insomnia is ill-advised and quite frankly makes not a lot of sense because when tolerance develops, anxiety and insomnia can actually worsen and become more severe than they were initially or ever before. And that's due to the benzodiazepine itself. So to minimize this risk, benzodiazepines are most effective when used rarely and intermittently, like one-off doses for flight anxiety or the dentist. Um, ultimately, in my tolerance, I developed insomnia as well. I started to struggle to function at work. I had to write everything down. I couldn't remember things, and I became completely overwhelmed trying to learn new things. Next slide. Um, some of the other many symptoms I experienced during tolerance, lots of GI symptoms. I had rashes, joint pains, depression. I became suicidal. I was sleeping constantly, fatigue no motivation. I isolated from friends and family. I was agitated constantly, could not handle stress. I had rage, screaming fits, which were completely out of, you know, my personality, obsessing and compulsive behaviors, um, racing thoughts, paranoia. Next slide. So why is tolerance important to recognize? Because like I mentioned earlier, uh, prescribing Cascade and polypharmacy oftentimes result when tolerance is not recognized. The tolerance and interdose withdrawal are often misdiagnosed as the patient's condition, condition worsening or a new underlying condition. And so more and more medications are prescribed. Like I said, I wound up on six medications. Um, and then the prescribing cascade is really one drug to sort of treat the side effects of another. So clonopin was added when Xanax tolerance happened. And then when I was so tired and depressed from benzodiazepines, I was put on Adderall to keep me awake and focused and to help with depression. When Adderall suppressed my appetite, I was given Remeron so that I would eat again. When I stopped sleeping, Ambien and Seroquel were added at bedtime. Um, Next slide. Then you get into uh, tolerance being important to recognize because of something called medication spellbinding. Uh, basically, this happens so insidiously with benzodiazepines uh, for some people that they don't recognize the patient who's taking the benzodiazepines don't recognize that the benzodiazepine is their problem. So they often underestimate how impaired they are. They um, deny the harmful role that the drug might be playing in their altered state. Sometimes they even think they're functioning better. And two things that might uh, reinforce that is that if you are someone who strongly believes in conventional medicine, like I did, I was trained in it. So I had this feeling and thought that doctors cure and they don't ever, you know, cause harm. And so why would my doctor give me a medication that was harming me? And then also every time I went back to the doctor, I was told that, oh, this is you. This is your so-called mental illness. Your underlying conditioning is worsening. This is proof that you actually need the medications. So all of those things reinforced me not figuring out the benzodiazepines were my problem. Um, and lastly, tolerance is important to recognize because uh, lots of people spend countless uh, years and lots of money and tons of misery chasing diagnoses and getting treatments they don't need, paying for um, harmful and even useless medications and therapists. And really, it's their altered physiology from the benzodiazepines that is the problem. Next slide. So, um, like I said, I had a detox or over rapid withdrawal. This is inappropriate for patients who are not suffering from addiction. 
In other words, patients who were prescribed benzodiazepines and who are taking them as such. Um, often, it's also important to note that if a patient reports um, feeling that they need to increase their benzodiazepines, um, it may just be because they are having tolerance or interdose. That doesn't mean that they are addicted or are suffering from addiction. Um, these patients who are subjected to detox are harmed twice. First, by the long-term prescription, usually without adequate informed consent, and second, by this medical mismanagement. Detox can result in severe withdrawal syndromes like seizures, psychosis, akathisia, uh, which is a severe movement disorder that can cause suicide, and even death. Uh, detoxes often fail. The patients can do poorly. Uh, like in my situation, I actually wound up back on benzodiazepines because the withdrawal syndrome was so severe, I couldn't endure um, the detox. Um, a lot of times you'll pay thousands of dollars to go to these centers as well. So it's very expensive. Um, you wind up on more polypharmacy at some of the detox centers. And if your family and friends think that you are suffering from addiction, um, a lot of times they will give you, you know, tough love or they will uh, uh, say, you know, the addiction model is not to enable the person when actually patients who are suffering from benzodiazepine problems need a lot of support. Next slide. So protracted withdrawal syndromes. Um, Studies report that 10 to 44% of chronic benzodiazepine users experience moderate to severe protracted withdrawal symptoms upon cessation, and the protracted withdrawal can last months or years. Some potential risk factors are cold turkey, rapid tapers, genetics, and kindling. We're not actually sure uh, why people get protracted, and even some folks who taper slowly will go on to get protracted syndromes. Um, there is a problem for some people with the nomenclature protracted describes the time sequence uh, of how long things can take, but the term withdrawal can be misleading. Um, so for example, in my case, I haven't been withdrawing from anything for nine years. So I don't feel like this is withdrawal, but I still have symptoms um, so some have suggested calling this phenomenon benzodiazepine induced brain injury or benzodiazepine injury syndrome. Uh, other suggestions are neurotoxicity. Next slide. So some of my protracted symptoms are depersonalization and derealization, like being detached from myself and my surroundings, neuropathy, burning skin, inability to multitask or endure, endure stress, anxiety, irrational fear and paranoia, irritability, chronic fatigue, anhedonia and flatness, numbness, next slide, dizziness and off balance and constantly feeling like I'm moving on a boat, uh, vision problems, headaches, muscle spasms, nausea, cognitive impairment, a meningitis or concussion-like feeling, like I've been, you know, just kicked in the head, um, feeling like a switch has flipped in my brain that it just, if it would just turn back on, um, I could connect again, but it won't. Uh, insomnia and adverse reactions to medications, um, which is hypothesized to be due to the hypersensitivity of the nervous system. Next slide. So as Dee touched on initially in his intro, the impact of being in protracted withdrawal is huge. Um, I have lost my job and, and been un unable to work, which has massive financial implications, both short and long term. This has had a horrible impact on relationships. <clears throat> I was a woman of childbearing age at the time of prescription. And so I haven't been able to have a family because I've been ill during that time period. So this is something for patients and clinicians alike to consider. Um, lost life experiences, just feeling like I've been in a coma for over a decade. Um, and even if you do eventually get better, you've got you know, in my situation, 10 years of being ill. So you're left to sort of clean up the mess and lots and lots of trauma, especially medical trauma. Um, and, and some people develop PTSD from the um, experienced. Next slide. 
So why is recognizing protracted syndromes important? Uh, patients need support and validation and hope. Uh, some people do take their lives because this goes on for so long and is so severe. Um, clinicians, please keep protracted withdrawal in your differential. That way you can avoid more misdiagnosis and more mistreatment. Um, otherwise, for people experiencing it, it's hard to go to the doctor because when you bring this up, um, if they don't consider it or believe it, then you're just chasing all of these new diagnoses. Um, lastly, we need more research into what causes protracted withdrawal and how to reduce the risk of developing it, treatments and how to best help these patients, what percentage of people who develop protracted withdrawal will recover and will there be permanent symptoms. And final thoughts, um, <clears throat> I don't wanna sound dramatic, but it's true. I consider taking benzodiazepines the biggest mistake and regret of my life and the worst thing that's ever happened to me. And the withdrawal and protracted syndromes that result from long-term use in some patients can be severe and cause suffering that is indescribable. There are many times throughout this 10 year ordeal that I thought about dying because it seemed like it was the only way out. And so as a result, the decision to start for, for patients and clinicians and stop benzodiazepines should not be taken lightly at all. Thank you very much.